Well now, well now. Yeah. This is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. Welcome back to Clownfish TV. We're going to talk about the comic book industry because we did a video a couple of weeks ago talking about how it's safe for comic book professionals, especially veterans, to come out and say the things that YouTubers and comic skaters and, and whatever have been saying for the last four or five years. And been vilified for. And been vilified for, right. So Eric Larson, uh, who's a big shot over Image Comics, he's one of the uh, the founders of Image Comics, and he actually was a favorite creator of mine growing up. I loved Eric Larson's Spider-Man run. Um, I read the early Savage Dragon, so I was uh, very disheartened to uh, see some of his political hot takes on Twitter. The guy doesn't shut up. Uh, it's really unfortunate, but he did say something that got the attention of Bounding in the comics, and he's basically talking about Marvel and DC replacing characters, right? That it's not a good idea, and he actually wants the replacement characters to fail. Wow, that sounds very Comicsgate, or Comicsgate adjacent of him to say. Oh my God, he's Comicsgate adjacent, I yes. just think it's funny, because how many years people have been saying, you know, hey, look, we're not saying we're against diversity and inclusion, but we don't think you should take existing characters and just change them willy nilly, make new characters, that kind of thing. Yes. And they've gotten so much hate. They're istophobes, they're incels, they're blah, blah, blah. Quit put them on, on block lists and block them from the industry. How dare they? And now more and more people are starting to sit, come, you know, call a spade a spade. And now it's cool to say this. Apparently something's yep. changed in the last two months, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. And now it's okay. And now, you know, oh, what a hero. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, wow. Thanks, Eric. Finally, for... someone spoke up. Uh, yeah, and this is you know also you know Bill Sienkiewicz. He's another one who has been very critical of Comicsgate, saying a lot of the same things that YouTubers have been saying. And I have to wonder if part of that isn't that the people they've been pandering to have turned on them. Well, that's probably what happened. I they'll mean, eat you last, but they'll eat you anyway. They're gonna eat you anyway. Right? Just like a freaking, you know, a deal you make with the devil in a comic book. It's, well, it could gonna... also be, too, that some of the people that were, like, the big leading voices in the load of shit that's been the last five years in comics, yeah. a lot of them are being, uh, I won't say blacklisted, but they're starting to be unhirable or, like, people aren't wanting to bring them in because they're just drama incarnate. Yeah. And the same with some of the media people that were surrounding it, drama incarnate. So now they're starting to lose their grip. And now people feel more uh, okay about saying what they thought the whole time, but they wouldn't say it because they didn't have the balls to do it. I have to wonder if if part of this isn't because of the Image Comics Union that these oh, are the yeah. people they they you know pandered to, and now they're trying to force their hand. Right, and you know Larson, look, he is he is one of the founders of Image, uh, regardless of what you think of his political hot takes, and he's got a lot of them. Um, the yeah, guy has been. Need to stop with that, really. They, they should, right? Yeah. Um, but he's uh, he's he's been in the industry for a very long time. Uh, he's definitely paid his dues. Um, I just think this is so funny because this is, you know, uh, up there with, with Bill Sienkiewicz, same thing, mm -hmm. same exact same things yep. that YouTubers have said. Actually, that is what kicked off the whole uh, Comicsgate fiasco was comic book readers, longtime comic book readers being upset with Marvel and DC just swapping out characters. It was uh, lazy. Yeah, it was lazy. It was We're insulting to diverse, for diversity people, yeah, people that are diverse. You're, it's insulting. Yeah, because back in the day, at least we had, you know, brand new characters being created. We had Milestone. We had, you know, right. um, and they actually put the marketing dollars behind That's these characters. It. They're basically saying that we don't think that a character as diverse can carry it on its own. We have to take an existing uh, mantle or, you know, an existing character and change that character cha or give that mantle to somebody else, even they earned, whether they earned it or not, just to, you know, make sure it sells. And that's even more insulting. Yeah, so let's talk about this. Apparently, it's becoming safer and safer to say the things that would get you blacklisted from the comic book industry just four or five years right. ago. Right, so now that it's safe, they'll say something. Now that it's safe. So before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 262,000 subs. Yay! Thank you so much for the support. We do talk about the comic book industry. Having made comics ourselves, go to shopclownfish.com. That's right shopclownfish.com. We're going to be making more comic books. Yep. We have a lot of comics projects in the pipeline. Contrary to what people on Twitter think. Contrary to what the people on Twitter think. Just because you haven't seen them doesn't mean they're not being worked on. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't mean we have contracts signed or don't have contracts signed. Anyway, let's talk about this. Um, Savage Dragon creator blasts Marvel and DC Comics for replacing iconic characters. I want it to flop. If you said that, Eric Larson, if you said that four or five years ago, you would have been blacklisted from the comic book industry. Mm -hmm. They would have made you grovel on Twitter 
You would have had books pulled from you. You would have been called Comicsgate. And bizarro Eric Larson would have attacked you in addition right. to all the other people on Twitter attacking you. Mm -hmm. You would have attacked yourself. You would start hitting yourself on Twitter if you said something like that. But here we are because now it's safe. Yeah. Uh, Eric and Bill Sienkiewicz and all these other uh, other veteran comic book creators who I knew, frankly, had a lot more common sense than they've been displaying. But I think a lot of them have been bending the knee to the woke mob on mm -hmm. Twitter because well, they want to make sure they can still work in the industry. We're also seeing now that these comics, a lot of these comics, these changes, like we've seen with DC especially, they're not doing well. No. They are failing. There is a, a, a financial record of a failure that, you know, I mean, even like Captain Marvel and America Chavez and how many times they have to reboot those things, you know, Ms. Marvel and all that. So you, you have a, a, a actual track record now that yes. it's not doing well. So now the powers that be at these companies are being like, wow, we lost a lot of money. Well, shit, we might have to send them other places. So, you know, everybody's starting to be like, well, wait a minute, maybe there's something to this. <sighs> God. Okay, so Eric Larson, who is the CFO, of Image Comics. I wasn't sure exactly what his title was there, but he's the money guy. So he's probably looking at the numbers. Well, by the way, you probably won't ever get a deal at Image Comics now, but that's okay. You probably weren't anyway, even though we defended them with the union. We actually have the, yeah. yeah. Um, Jim Valentino, they tried to cancel him. I think now that Comics Twitter is starting to turn on Image Comics, now Image Comics. Uh, okay, so it was Jim Valentino because he took the credits from the office staff that won the union. Right, and they were mad about that. They are mad about that. They are mad about Image uh, you know, blocking the union because they are like, I don't see a point. Then they moved their offices completely. And then they started attacking Todd McFarlane for something he said about female action figures not selling well. But that's his experience as someone who's created action figures for 30 years. Mm -hmm. He's like, the female characters, most of them don't sell that well. Uh, yeah, I can, t I can solve that problem for you. Brushable hair. Brushable hair. Just, I'm telling you. Brushable hair. Good. I'm telling you. Any female character. If you gave if you gave Captain Marvel brushable hair, maybe she yeah. would have sold better. I'm d I'm pointing it out. Carol Danvers with a battle brush. Uh, just saying. Yeah. Anyway, Savage Dragon creator and the CFO of Image Comics, Eric Larson, recently blasted Marvel and DC for replacing their iconic characters with new characters that try to take up the iconic character's identities. You don't say. Holy shit. Come on, You Eric. don't say. Come on. I knew I knew he was smarter than this. I'm like, you're, you're just saying what comics Twitter wants to hear so they don't cancel you, and they canceled you anyway. They're gonna, yeah, they always cancel you. Now, always now cancel. that you're getting canceled, you're already like, well, not canceled, but they're already gonna call you out, so you might as well say what you actually thought because they're just eating you last. Right, but the problem is, is you you had five years that you could have gone to bat, and you let other comic book creators. I'm not just talking two about two months ago. We'll talk about that in a two minute. months two ago. Months ago. You let them get eaten. There's a complete, you know, uh, shift in 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 tone here. We'll talk about that in a minute. But tell them what they said just uh, a couple days ago. Uh, Lars made his thoughts on the the matter public in a recent thread on Twitter. Um, he said, for some reason, the conventional wisdom at Marvel and DC is to have new characters assume the identities of old characters. But I'm a fan of Iron Man. I'm absolutely not buying your shitty new Iron Man. I want it to flop so that old Iron Man can return. That sounds so comic skate. That is, that is hate speech because Riri Williams is the best best character ever. I just think the name Riri Ri is Ri hilarious. Ri Actually, Williams. it's always funny to me because our cat, we, we called her Riri. Yeah, that's so Her name was Rini, but we called her Riri. And if you're going to reinvent a character from the ground up, why not just create a new character? Oh, my God. Wow. This 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 sounds like, you know, something we've already heard uh, lots of times. When everybody's comic skate, nobody is. This is exactly what's, again, Bill Sienkiewicz saying pretty much the exact same things. I don't this. I can't. What the fuck Meanwhile, is Meanwhile, how many people have taken so much shit over this? Anyway, continue. You couldn't even mildly criticize anything that Marvel and DC were doing without being attacked on Twitter, without being dragged by the comic book media. You didn't have to be a right-winger. I mean, right-wing politics got mixed up in all this, but you didn't have to be a right-winger. You could just say, hey, I, d I don't like that characters now are you know, suddenly gay when there was no indication like before. Man. Like Iceman. There was never any indication that Iceman... I'm not Man... saying I don't like gay characters. I'm right. saying and this character doesn't make sense. And then they're like, oh my God, you hate her! Triggered! 
Iceman always dated women. And then all of a sudden, hey, he woke up and now he's gay. But he's flamboyantly gay. And again, there's nothing wrong with having a flamboyantly gay character, but you make a new character, you don't do it to Iceman. And people right. complained and they were called bigots well, and Nazis. I know and, people that, that were gay complained because they're like, wait, we just get a hand-me-down character? You yeah. don't even give us our own character? Because Iceman's already had umpteen years of, well, not umpteen, decades of marketing. And you know what else is funny? Some of those kid people that were gay liked Iceman. Even when he would go as a straight person, they didn't want him to be gay. Anyway. You know, I, I, no, right? Mind blown. Who would have thought? You've done 90% of the work already. Why not give that character a new name and let the old one continue to exist? Okay, I'm just going to I'm gonna pop in here real quick with the uh, America Chavez uh, thing. Because we were saying before that the versions of America Chavez and Ms. Marvel, etc. that we're going to get in the MCU are going to be radically different yes. from the comic book versions. Damage control. Plus, they want to make them likable. And yeah. I'm not trying – I'm going to be a bitch. I don't care. They aren't likable in the comics. So they, they might have started out likable. Yes. They start out likable, okay? I'm not going to say they never were. That's not true. They started out as likable characters, and then uh, they had people take over, and they became more and more, you know, uh, stereotypical uh, leftist agenda-driven stereotypes, and people didn't like them. And so they're, they want – audiences to like these characters so they're going to make them palatable to everyone yeah and with america chavez i mean she started out as a completely different character and then they they basically had to retcon away her ridiculous origin that she comes from like the planet of space lesbians yeah. and all this other junk and they're like oh no she's just from new jersey she was hallucinating she thought she was an alien is that planet coochie plant coochie mm -hmm. yeah that is in my head canon it's planet coochie plant coochie um so anyway uh co-creator joe casey um, was offered money for her appearance in, in uh, Doctor Strange and wouldn't take it because I think I think Disney only gives these guys like five thousand dollars and a thank you. Like we'll give you five grand and a thank you for creating this character, but the version we're going to put on screen has has nothing to do with the comic book version, right? Because the comic book version has been destroyed, so we have to start over. Well, that's it's not going to be. Yeah, it's going to be a completely different version than any of the comic book versions. I think. Oh yeah, I mean most. Of, I mean you know everybody knows and loves Robert Downey Jr.'s. Tony Stark, but he was very different than Tony Stark in the comics. Yes. Um, anyway, Larson pointed out that by doing derivative characters instead of original characters, uh, the creators aren't sharing the profits from it. Uh, creators get back-end participation in new characters, but not reinvented ones. So if Ed Brubaker had made the reveal for the Winter Soldier a red herring and instead revealed he was Fred Johnson instead of Bucky, he would have had participation in that character instead he got nothing. So that could be a driving force in this. And that's, that's come up in uh, discussion before that all of this is about trying to cheat creators out of their creation by making derivative versions of, oh, we don't have to pay royalties on well, Spider-Man. And I can tell you for Superman. a fact that Disney's going to do anything they can to keep all the money while simultaneously putting out videos about how, you know, uh, they are all about helping people and everything else. That, yeah. that at the end of the day, they have legal teams on this to make sure they retain as much money as possible. Yep. yep. They say one thing and act in another. Uh, Eric Larson said the old Blue Beetle and Booster Gold had great chemistry. That's true. I think a lot of people who might have given the new character a chance didn't want to support the book because they hoped it would fail and the older character would return. I think this is kind of what happened with Disney Star Wars. People were so angry about the sequel trilogy that they were hoping if they boycotted everything, Disney Star Wars and Disney would just throw their hands up in the air and be like, oh, that's it. We're just rolling it all back. Well, that's yeah. what happened. I think it was Solo. I think we said that was going to happen. Everybody was boycotting Solo because of The Last Jedi. And we said what's going to happen is Disney's going to take it as we don't want movies like the stories movies. We only want more movies like The Last Jedi. And that's how they took it until, you know, they, they failed with Rise of Skywalker. But it, it's like that. Yep. Yep. Um, the whole mindset of I'm not going to give these companies my great ideas is self-destructive if you give them your great ideas anyway, and you do it in such a way that you don't get a piece of it. And that's, that's why that's we're not, true. that's why we're not seeing a lot of new characters. I mean, the last decade that introduced a lot of new characters to Marvel and DC comics, probably the early two thousands, late nineties. And then after that, I think, you know, when all the movies started to get made and these creators didn't get a cut of it, they're like, yeah, we're not going to create anything new and that's Why? what happens when Why? you work for these companies it's you, they own what you create and, yeah. and sadly that that's the, the reality so that's another reason why we always tell people to make their own things yep um i'm a fan of the person in the costume as much or more than i am the costume itself if i'm reading batman and you introduce a new batman and kill off the old batman don't count me don't count me in to keep reading batman oh, oh my yeah. god stop making sense eric larson <sighs> and if if 
he had said this five years ago. You know what would have happened? Well, if people would have spoke out five years ago, well, yeah, would it though? If you had enough people speaking out, would they have got this far? Would it have gone this far? But it, it probably would have stopped. It probably would have stopped because if you had a lot of the bigger voices, you know, saying like, okay, okay, you know, you're going off the rails here, it might maybe we wouldn't have the outcome we had. Right. Because there would have been enough power behind that. You know, yeah, and I think a lot of it was, you know, a lot of these guys were, were veterans. Um, they didn't want to get canceled because, I mean, I, I've seen what happens to, to comic book creators that are no longer employable if they don't have money set aside. You know, they wind up doing the con scene, they wind up selling prints. It's actually kind of sad. A lot of them don't have retirements, they don't have health insurance or good health insurance. Well, let's be honest, a lot of people don't have a lot of those. No, things. no, but I'm saying like the comic book industry has has chewed up and spit out so many people. But you, I remember when I met you and you wanted to do comics, you flat out told me that you only have so many years in that until yeah. they get rid of you because they burn you out and yeah. then they get rid of you. And you told me that straight up. Yeah. If you're lucky, you get a good five to 10 year run and then that's Some it. Some people get longer, but it's, that's few and far between. Yeah. A lot of times what happens is, well, kind of in the case of Eric Larson, I mean, if he had stayed at Marvel, I guarantee you he would not be drawing Spider-Man. Um, he might have moved into like an editorial role or some other kind of office staff role. But he would not still be drawing Spider-Man comics. Right. Anyway, talking about five years ago, uh, 2017 was the year almost everything went wrong for Marvel Comics. This was coming from The Hollywood Reporter. This was when things really uh, reached peak idiocy in 2017 because we're starting to see a lot of those stupid decisions made by Marvel where they were replacing all their characters at once. And you can, you can do it. You can replace a couple of characters here and there. It, it's happened for decades in Marvel. I mean, a, a very long time in DC. But they were like, oh, let's just replace everybody. And everybody's going to like like all these new stand-in characters, you know. And that's that's the way it's going to be. And you're going to like it. And people didn't like it. And they started complaining about it. And, and uh, they started getting called bigots. And well, the issue is you can be additive, but you shouldn't be subtractive. And that's what right. they did. And then this is where everybody started complaining. And yes. the sales started going off a cliff. Yeah, and you can you can track it back to these companies taking existing characters. I don't think anybody has any problem with extra seats being added to the table. No, most people don't. But kicking the legs out from underneath your core characters. I mean, you know, you've got the Avengers, you know, at at their peak in 2017 and you replace all the characters. Yeah, that didn't make sense to me. Like what the hell? Like if I were Disney, I'd be like what the actual are you doing? Because if you kept the characters like what people were looking for from the movies, people would have gone and bought more books just to continue yeah. reading stories. Yeah. And yeah, that was your prime opportunity. And you just pissed it away. Um, for in, in in the name of, you know, agenda. But back to the other thing. So Larson continues. I mean, apparently this went on for a long time. There's a huge difference between a company concurrently telling stories with legacy characters while introducing replacement versions and the company reviving long dead concepts um you can have the old and the new coexist that's what i'm saying additive not subtractive you know this is ridiculous this is ridiculous but anyway eric larson um eric larson just a couple of months ago said hey uh i know how to fix the punisher because there's been and i don't think we really covered that too much no. we talked about the punisher logo being problematic but that's why i think one of the reasons why you know it wasn't the punisher wasn't in the commercial they added for yeah. disney plus because the, the logo has been an issue yeah, and that might have been part of the, the motivation behind taking Stan Lee's tribute off of that episode of The Punisher. Now, he didn't have anything to do with the creation of The Punisher, as I understand it. But, but um, yeah, we all know that The Punisher is problematic now. Eric Larson's blah, like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. blah, blah. Like, I, I, I can fix it. I can fix it. Just make him gay. Make Which is kind of funny, but it's not untrue. I mean, it could have been a joke. Make, him, you know, get, get, make The Punisher gay, hunt people who wear his logo. It was probably a joke, but, you know... It probably would fix it, but still, you know, according to well, as far as like the the the, the complainers are concerned, Twitter and so on. Yeah. But yeah, he's made a lot of comments that are in in opposition, right, to right. what he's saying now. I just think it's so um, interesting that one by one, pretty much every one of the image founders has been on the receiving end of the comic Twitter backlash. Um, you know, Rob Liefeld, they're always coming after Rob Liefeld. Uh, Todd McFarlane now because of his comments about uh, action figures. Uh, Eric Larson, I'm sure, is going to get in hot water over this. Jim Valentino because of him taking the credits off the books. Um, you know, we've got Jim Lee over at uh, DC 
but you know for the most part it just seems like <laughs> the old guard is is on the receiving end of everything that comic book youtubers and longtime comic book fans have been saying that uh, comics culture has been corrupted by weirdos um, who are looking to cancel you for any reason and really at the end of the day they want all these old guys out of the comic book industry they want mm -hmm. to be in themselves and they want those old characters uh, washed away and their uh, OCs but they aren't going to buy them replace. no nobody's going to buy them but they weren't buying them themselves they just wanted no. to make these demands but they actually weren't going to buy them no and this is what happens when you listen to Twitter and I think companies are starting to learn this uh, but yeah just you know thanks so much for the uh, the backup there Eric uh, five years Five years after the fact, you know, um, mm -hmm. people could have used your your help back then. Same with you, Bill Sienkiewicz. Instead, you threw shade at people who had dissenting opinions about the mainstream comic book industry. So good luck with that. Yep. All right, we got to wrap it up. Yep. Okay, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. Bye.